everything you like about the Samsung Galaxy S4, plus Verizon's voice and LTE networks. I'm Joe Levi for Pocket Now. This is the Galaxy S4 Verizon Edition review. We've already given quite a bit of attention to the Samsung Galaxy S4. There's no doubt that it's a formidable player and deserving of its flagship status. Other than the radios and the branding on the outside of the case, the Verizon version of the Galaxy S4 has identical hardware with its US siblings. The question of whether or not the Galaxy S4 is a great phone or worth upgrading from one of last year's flagship smartphones has already been asked and answered. Now the question becomes, does the Verizon edition of the Galaxy S4 perform on par with its siblings on the other carriers? The first thing you'll notice about the phone, regardless of which version, is its 5-inch 1080p Super AMOLED display. We've already bored you with pixel densities and pen tile displays. To sum it all up, at 441 ppi, the screen is gorgeous. To be honest, I didn't think I'd see much of a difference past the 720p screen of my Nexus 4. I was wrong. Watching HD movies and reading ebooks on the Galaxy S4 was beautiful. The Verizon version of the phone has the same quad-core Snapdragon 600 CPU clocked at 1.9 GHz and the same Adreno 320 GPU packed with 2 GB of RAM that the other US variants have. It's available in 16 and 32 GB varieties and comes with an empty micro SD card slot which accepts cards up to 64 GB in size. The 13 megapixel camera performs the same as the other versions of the phone. Good, but not great. But enough of what's the same, let's get into what's different. The obvious difference is the inclusion of the Verizon voice and data networks, which both performed quite well. Verizon's network seems to reach further in less densely populated areas than it does in cities. PocketNow's Utah offices are an ideal place to test this. In urban areas, voice and LTE data were flawless. Audio was great, LTE was snappy. In rural areas, voice was always good, but data often dropped down to what is best described as snail paste. On to software. Blocking mode, a really nice do not disturb feature included in other versions of the Galaxy S4, is conspicuously missing on the Verizon edition of the phone. Infinite Scroll, the Samsung feature that lets you continue swiping once you get to the end of your home screens or app drawer, has also been removed. Another Samsung feature, changing your home screen mode between standard mode and easy mode, it's still there, but for some reason they called it starter mode on the Verizon edition. Speaking of software, Verizon has always been the king of bloatware in the past, and no, that's not a very flattering title. The Verizon version of the Galaxy S4 keeps up the tradition. The entire suite of Amazon apps, five or so in all, come pre-installed, and although you can disable them, you can't remove them. They sort of made up for the extra Amazon apps by removing some of the Samsung apps, namely Samsung Optical Reader, the Samsung App Store, and Chat On, which may or may not be a good thing depending on if you use those apps. All of the Samsung gestures, like AirView, Smart Scroll, Smart Stay, they're all still there. Along with S-Beam, though that's turned off by default, which we think is a good thing for cross-compatibility with other NFC-enabled Androids. Battery life, even on LTE, was surprisingly good, with the phone lasting all day, all night, and into the next day. Like the AT&T version, the 16GB Verizon Edition runs about $200 with a new contract, and the 32 gig variant goes for $100 more. Both are available now. The Galaxy S4 for Verizon lost a couple of points for adding bloatware, and lost a couple more for removing various features available in the other versions of the phone, but still commands a solid 8.4 out of 10. That's gonna wrap up this quick review, but we've got a lot more information about the Verizon edition and the other editions of the Galaxy S4 over at pocketnow.com. Before you head on over there, make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you liked what you saw here. If you've got questions or want to join in the conversation, make sure you do that in the comments down below. While you're at it, tell your friends about us on all of your favorite social media. For Pocket Now, I'm Joe Levi. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you next time.